to send the money to our loved ones, friends, and family in Liberia. High fees, long lines in banks, the usual complaint of the system being down, such a waste of time and energy. That is why I was very happy when I learned that Sendwave is now in Liberia. So now I can send money anytime from anywhere directly from my smartphone to the MTM Lone Star Cell Mobile Money account of a loved one, friend, or family within seconds for just a tiny fee. So download Sendwave now to your phone from your Apple Store or Google Play Store. Add your details and don't worry, they are very safe and secure and start sending money today. Don't forget to insert the promo code PASTA to get free $5 credit added to your first transfer. Same way, it's secure, super fast, and by far the most affordable way to send money to Liberia. I'm Henry P. Costa and a very happy customer. Thank you. I said, honey, have you heard about the Global Net TV? Oh, yes, sweetheart. I read about them. At Global Net ITV, they provide superior television services with endless selections of TV channels and many options to include live TV. That's a great news. Yes, they provide news, entertainment, premier sports like NBA, American football, major soccer leagues, movies, and favorite TV shows with endless content and no service interruptions. Sweetheart, is that all? No, they also have adult content included with parental guidance. Also, check out their six-month plan for only $96. And their 12-month plan for only $176. Wow, honey, isn't that a great news? Welcome to the program. Uh, you're listening to the Costa Show. Today is... Uh, Monday, October the 26th, and it's a very beautiful day from where I sit in Delaware, Wilmington. Uh, I'm sorry, bad, you know. Uh, I've, been out of, I've been out of Wilmington for a while now, for at least, uh, that, that would be June, July, August, September, October, five months. All right, uh, welcome to the program. Good, good morning, Walker. Yeah, good morning, Costa. Good morning to our many listeners. Welcome to a brand new. Yeah, the week is new, and we are climaxing this month already. Uh, it's good to be here with you. All right, Barry. Uh, I want to say good morning, good afternoon, good evening to all of our listeners, our viewers around the world. Uh, and, uh, it's very, very good to be here. We have a very full, uh, full menu this morning. We have a lot of things to talk about. Um, yeah, it's, it's a very, very uh, interesting day. Um, I don't even know where to begin, <laughs> but I think I'm going to begin with SendWave. So if you're looking to send money to Liberia, uh, very conveniently. Now, I know that a lot of people have called me from Liberia to complain about uh, hiccups. You know, SendWave customers have complained uh, to me about hiccups that their, their, their people face on the ground when the funds go. Yes, the money does go to their loved ones, to their friends, but trying to get the money out is a problem. And and it's not just with SendWave. It's not unique with SendWave or mobile money. It's like, it's like that with everything. Uh, you go to the banks, uh to get somebody to send you money via MoneyGram or Western Union, to get it out, it's a problem. Sure. They will either tell you the bank is down, and it's unfortunate because that's not what SendWave would want for their customers to go through. But the availability of, of, of U.S. dollars is a serious problem. You can't find U.S. dollars. It's a serious problem. So people are experiencing this problem uh, because um, they can't find... Uh, sometimes you go to uh, the mobile money agents... Uh, it's difficult, but people who oftentimes go to the Lone Star Cell, um, M the MTN stores, uh, you know, it's much easier. That's that's where you know you should go. Once you can get it or cash out your money from the mobile money agent, you should definitely try out the Lone Star Cell store. But it is a problem. I agree. I've been getting lots of calls from people. Uh, you know, people who obviously love Senway, but uh, you know have to deal with that when it, when the money gets on the, on the on the ground. 
it's a serious liquidity problem, and uh, we we just hope that it's going it's going to improve. All right, so um, so I, I, as we often do, we issue a disclaimer before we move further because Send Wave is not associated with the political discussions that we have here. Uh, they're purely one hundred percent a business, uh, a remittance business. Making it easy, convenient, fast, cheap for you to send money to your loved ones in Liberia. Of course, if you haven't downloaded the app, go and do that. And just enter the promo code COSTA to get yourself uh, free $5. You would have to click on what? There's a little icon in the upper right corner. I think with three bars, one, two, three bars, a smaller icon. You just click on that and you will see enter a promo code and just put my name COSTA, C-O-S-T-A. Thank you so much. Um, now we're going to move on to our talking points here. So yesterday, Senator Prince Johnson in his church, while uh, delivering one of his crazy messages he calls a sermon, he said that they have a plan. Apparently he must be very happy with George Weir recently uh, because we all know how Prince Johnson is. One minute he's complaining about the CDC being a terrible, terrible, doing a terrible job uh, with running the country. And then they will give him little money and then he will keep quiet. He will draw his, his uh, statements. Uh, the other minute he will be saying very nice things. So he must be very happy with George Weir. And so yesterday in his church, he said they have a plan. Their plan is that when a referendum passes, they're going to make George Weir president for a third term, you know. They're drawing inspiration from Guinea and the Ivory Coast. You see, because you see what happened to Guinea, to the Ivory Coast, is that they made an amendment to the Constitution. Same as Guinea, but the Ivory Coast was kind of more, kind of, I think the Prince Johnson, uh, you know, madness that came out of his mouth, it's kind of taking cue from what happened in Ivory Coast. So it's essentially what Prince Johnson was saying is that once they change the constitution, once they change the constitution, uh, whereby the tenure of uh, president will be reduced from six to five years, Prince Johnson is saying then George Weir would have to begin afresh. So that means the first six years, or the six years he's serving now uh, would be uh, would would be ignored. Yeah, that means. He, he, are you listening to this madness? And I will play the audio. That means George we are now would have to begin a brand new five year term. That means you're talking three terms because if he would have to begin a brand new five year term, and it makes no legal sense at all. I don't know where he takes this madness from. But that's what he's saying. Uh, you know, he might have heard it from George Weah. He might have been sitting with them, and, and they're probably talking this nonsense. I mean, the, the boys are brave. That he's going to serve six years, which he's currently doing. He's, he's, he's going midway in, 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 into his first and only term. George Weah's first and only term as president. He's gone midway, three years all the way, three, three more years to go. Brian Johnson is saying, what they're going to do is that they're going to wait. By the time the Constitution changes, because whenever you make an amendment to the Constitution, the Constitution has changed, of course. Then they're going to say, okay, John Weir can now begin his first term as president. Then he's going to run again, and that running again would not be his second term. They're going to say that run in 2023 is actually going to be his first term. That is what these idiots are saying. That we will sit down there and allow George Weir to run in 2023 as if he's only beginning or he's only running for his first term according to the new constitution. That is what they are saying. And Prince Johnson is such an idiot. He thinks that, uh, you know, he can already start to say about that. It is possible. I would not be surprised. If these jokers were actually sitting there discussing this nonsense, that, oh, Mr. President, one of the constitution changes, and uh, that's why we must do the referendum now so that once the constitution changes, this your first term would be ignored. Your first term would be ignored. 
you would be running for your first term, your actual first term, based on the new constitution in 2023. If and when you win, God forbid, which is not going to happen, then you would only be beginning your first term. And then when you're done with that five years later, then you can run for another term, which would begin at the end of the first five years. That is in their minds. Of course, that's how they think, in their stupid minds, their wet dreams. Then you will run for the second term. So basically, you're talking, George, we are running for finishing this term, which is six years, running for another term, that's five years, that's six plus five, that's 11 years, running for another term, that's 11 plus five, that's 16 years. Hello, folks. This is what Prince Johnson said. I'm going to go, I'm, I'm going to play this for you so that you can hear it yourself. Prince Johnson saying this. Boga, do you have it? No, not yet. I'll send it to you right now. Go to your WhatsApp. Get ready to play it. Yesterday, Prince Johnson, the crazy idiot of a senator from Nimba County, murderer. You know, these guys are joking. And Prince Johnson was a rebel before. A rebel general, a rebel commander. Today he's senator, he's a preacher. So nothing stops any one of us from becoming rebel generals too. Now you're, 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 you're talking madness. I want George Weir who will run for this term and then when he's done, this, this term would be ignored and then we're going to run, he's going to run for his first term five years later. Are you freaking kidding me? Play it, you, you have it. Play it so our people can hear it. Okay. This is their plan. Yeah. They'll play it for my page. We'll get two more years. <laughs> The first term, okay, that's what he meant. He said the first term. So the first term would be zero. That means the first six years will not count. According to him, the first six years will not count. So George Weir would be running in 2023. They would consider that as his first term according to the new constitution. Yeah. This guy is not saying this thing by himself. These idiots, McGill and the likes, Huh? Must have told George Weir that hey, you can do this. You change the constitution. You have a random passes. You can run for a third term. This is the way you do it. You see what happened in, in Ivory Coast. That is the basis upon which Alassan Dramani Watara is is, 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 is running. You understand? Watara is running based on the fact that. When the constitution changed, he's saying that it gives him the opportunity to run for the for a third term. That is why Watara is running. So this is what they're saying. We're, he's gonna run for a third term. You know, somebody told me about it, and I said to myself, you know what? Why am I why are you all worked up about this? Because I am not worked up about this. Because there is no way we're going to allow George Mia. To stay there for that long. It's not possible. Just where I'm going to win in 2023. So why am I worrying about some old rebel, Prince Justin, who if you yell at him so hard, he's going to collapse. Why should I worry about such idiots? Because we're not going to allow it. And you know the, you know the best part? A guy like Henry Costa, I'm not waiting for some political leader to tell me what to do. I'm not waiting for some 70 year old man or some 60 year old man to tell me what to do. No, we're not doing that. We don't take our instructions from them. We do not. 
and, 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 and they, they don't want to hear it, but it is the truth. We're not doing that. So nobody is going to tell me what to do in 2023. We are building our capacity and we're, and we're preparing ourselves to mount a very, very serious threat to George Weah long before that time. And you will see it very, very soon. So we're not, I'm not worried. Why worry? They said bird does not pray for long feathers. It only prays for long life. Because for as long as it lives, the feathers will grow. So we're not sitting here worrying about what happened. Oh, Joe, we all run again. Oh, we're, not, we're not doing that. We're sitting and we're waiting and we know what we will do. So let them play. Let them play all they want. But that is a wet dream that shall never come to pass. Talking about uh, by the time he finishes this first six years, the first six years will not count. First six years of stealing, of murdering auditors and, 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 and chasing people who criticize him and shutting down radio stations and, and, and enriching himself at the expense of the country, bankrupting the country, impoverishing the people, making their lives miserable. Those six years, they're coming to bring us in. Those six years will not count. Those six years will not count. Then he's going to begin a brand new, brand new five-year term after which he's going to run for another five-year term. Yeah, right. Yeah, right. We're going to sit there and allow that. You, you, you're joking. Never will we sit there and allow that. Unless we are not alive. Unless we do not have the means to fight this man. By any means necessary. If George Weah attempts to stay in power by vote breaking or by some subterfuge, we, we, some of us, myself included, perhaps leading the charge, will never ever sit down and allow him to remain in power. We will do whatever that is necessary. I say whatever, not ruling out absolutely no option. We're not, we're not going to sit there and rule out the possibility. All of the possibilities that were available to Prince Johnson, that were available to Charles Stiller, that were available to Ellen Johnson Salim, we will use all of those possibilities if and when necessary. If we are constrained, we shall not rule out any possibility to remove this man from power. I'm very clear. If this man, if this man decides that he can try to steal an election to stay in power, I'm telling you this. I, Henry Petro Costa, in the next three years, before we get to elections, you will see what I'm saying. Some, some of you will say, oh, today you see that big mouth. Guess where they see? Never, unless I am not alive, unless I do not have the means, I will do whatever it takes to ensure that this man, you steal an election? You think you're going to stay in power? By the time an idiot of a president or a leader steals an election, he has no legitimacy to remain in power. Therefore, listen to this, therefore, you as a citizen, you have got every right to use whatever means necessary to remove him from power. Let me repeat myself. By the time an idiot of a leader decides to steal an election, he so have he has lost all legitimacy to be in power. Therefore, every means, any means is necessary to remove him from power. <laughs> That's what I know. Samuel K. Do did it. You all know. By the time they steal election, you can remove them by any means. And listen, we will use whatever means at, at our disposal. Whatever means. You don't want to sit down here and let you stay in power longer than you should be in power. Huh? Six years. That's all you get, Mr. Weir. Six years. That's all you get. That's all you get. And we're not joking. If you think we're joking, when you see our capacity to do what we are saying, then that's when you should begin to be a friend. You should begin to be a friend. Nonsense. We'll sit down and let the idiot stay in power longer than his time. You all right. You, you think we're stupid? We're not going to let that happen. You're not going to let that happen. We are not going to let that happen. So let's not even talk about it. Let's move forward to, uh, and talk about something else. Now, so we wrote Debbie FP. We wrote Debbie FP to find out what's happening with the food thing. Uh... And WFP replied us. And we have their reply here. 
wanted to find out what's happening with the stimulus. WFP, you know, was the entity that was put in charge yeah. of the stimulus. So we said, okay, WFP, tell us what's going on. We want to know what's going on. WFP writes us back. They send us an email from their operations, I mean, their guy who's in charge of communication. Uh, John Moneyba. John Moneyba. This is the email that John Moneyba sent to us. Listen to this. We wrote the BFP requesting an update on the stimulus package. This is $30 million these people borrowed from the IMF. $30 million out of a total loan package of $50 million. So we said, we want to know what the BFP is doing because they were the ones who were supposedly giving the money to do the distribution. You remember what the government told us? That they wired the entire $30 million into WFP's account? Sure. That is what they said. Do you recall that? Yeah. Now, that's what the government told us. The government told us that the entire $30 million of the food distribution was wired into WFP's account. Therefore, WFP is supposed to have this money. But listen to what WFP said in this email. We have it. WFP wrote us back. You want to hear what WFP said in this email. The government of Liberia told us, look, this, this, this idiot George Bia takes us for granted. The guy takes us for granted. They wrote WFP and said, I mean, they, they told us in a press conference that WFP received the entire $30 million. And now this is why WFP is joking. This email they sent is absolute nonsense. It confirms our fear. It confirms our suspicion. That the government never gave WFP the thirty million dollars. WFP is in league with the government to dupe the Liberian people. That is our conclusion. Now WFP is embarrassed because the government said pub pub uh, publicly to the Liberian people that we gave WFP the entire thirty million. So WFP has the entire thirty million dollars. That is what the government told the Liberian people. Now WFP writes us back, and this is what they say. Let me read the email for you. So we use one of our people, Emmanuel Weir, to write this email with WFP. If you were listening to the show on Friday, we said we're going to write them. We did write them. And this is their reply. Dear Mr. Weir, this is to Emmanuel Weir of our staff, not George Weir. This is to Emmanuel Weir of our staff. Dear Mr. Weir, I hereby acknowledge receipt of your communication dated 22 October 2020 requesting an update on the COVID-19 household food distribution program. Kindly be informed that the COHFSP, as a COVID-19 household food distribution program, is fully managed by the Presidential Steering Committee. Fully managed? Hello? How is, how is it that WFP is now saying to us, that the food distribution program is fully managed by a presidential committee. But wait a Didn't the government say WFP is the one doing the food distribution? Yeah. But if somebody gave you $30 million to do food distribution and the money is supposed to be in your account according to the government, how the hell can you now say the government controls the money or the program? If you have the money, who controls the program? You have the money. Who controls the program? You. You control the program. But WFP is saying, can I be informed that the COVID-19 household food distribution program is fully managed by the Presidential Steering Committee chaired by Professor Wilson Tappe. This is WFP. Okay? That's what they say to us. And it's auxiliary subcommittees. The communication subcommittee chaired by the Ministry of Information spearheads all communications related components of the program. WFP is saying to us, you want any information regarding the food distribution, go to the Ministry of Information. They chair the Committee on Information. That is what WFP is saying to us. So they're trying to tell us that I want to hear inside you. But that's what I'm saying. Fellow Liberians, we have the evidence yet. WFP wrote us on Friday, October 22, to say to us 
that they are no longer involved with the food distribution. Hello, folks, are you listening to this? This is serious stuff. WFP is saying the food distribution program is fully managed by a presidential committee chaired by Professor Wilson Tapper and all of his auxiliary committees. They chair everything. You want information regarding the stuff? Go to them. You want update regarding the food distribution? Go to them. We have nothing to do with it. Listen to this. This is the final paragraph of this e email from the BFP. In view of this, I am pleased to refer you to the Minister of Information, specifically to Assistant Minister for Information Services, Honorable Daniel Thomas, for his kind follow-up to your inquiry. Sincerely, John Moniba, Communications Director, WFP Liberia. Folks, are you listening to this? Hmm. The government told us that they borrowed $15 million in our country's name from the IMF, $30 million of which is supposed to be used to procure food supplies, beans, rice, vegetable oil, to distribute to Liberians hit hard by the coronavirus. The target was 2 million people. That's about 50% of the population in the country. 2 million people were supposed to benefit from the food distribution. And that has not happened. They told us that they wired the entire $30 million into the WFP's account. That is what the government told us. The entire $30 million was wired into the WFP's account and they paid WFP about $2 million supposedly to handle logistical and operational, not logistical, to just a little service, a fee for service. That is what they said. They paid the FBI about $2 million to carry out this exercise. Today, the FBI is telling us, the cost of show, that we don't control that program. Fellow librarians, are you listening? Debbie FP wrote us on Friday and is telling us that they don't control the program, that any information we want regarding the food distribution program, we should go to the Ministry of Information. Sure. Hmm. The people who were supposed to have been given $30 million, the people who were supposed to have received directly into their bank account $30 million to procure food supplies and distribute seem to 2 million Liberians are the ones who they're telling us they don't control the program. Jesus Christ of now. This is an email. It's not like a letter that somebody can deny that they wrote. This is an e email. You write an email, it goes out, you cannot deny it. The evidence is there. We have the email, folks. Hmm. Debbie FB is saying that they do not control the food program. All we ask Debbie FB in our letter, please give us an update on the food distribution. How far are we? With How far are we? When do you resume? Debbie FB is saying, we are sorry, but we have no such information for you. The government stole the money. We were right when we said that. We are all right. All of us. We suspected that they stole the money. The government stole the money and WFP is working with the government. We don't have to exclude them. Debbie FB is working with the government. That is correct. Because when WFP agreed, when the government stated that they had transferred $30 million into WFP's account, bank account, yeah. WFP should have issued a statement clarifying to say, no, 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 you did not give us $30 million. Today, WFP is complicit in this criminality. The government has duped the Liberian people of $30 million in the name of distributing food during the, COVID, during the coronavirus crisis. Mm -hmm. WFP Liberia is guilty of conniving, conspiring with the government of Liberia to steal from the Liberian people. $30 million. No, you see, this is a situation. There is absolutely no way that the government of Liberia could steal this money without the FP supporting them. Because 
the WF, when the when WFP heard the government say that we gave you 30 million, but I, if you did not give me 30 million and you claim you gave me 30 million, what am I to do? I will come up and do a clarification that you did not give me 30 million dollars. Yeah. What are you afraid of? WFP doesn't need the Liberian government. It is us who need them. They don't need us. So the moment the government said we gave WLP thirty million dollars to do food distribution, WLP should issue a statement. No, 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 no. You did not give us thirty million dollars. You might have set aside thirty million dollars to procure food for us to distribute, but you did not give us the money. Fellow Liberians, are you listening to this? Your government told the told the Liberian people told you that they gave WLP thirty million dollars to procure food to distribute. WLP. Did not say anything. What do they say? Silence means consent. Yeah. Silence means consent. WFP is a criminal organization, fellow Liberians. This is what I want you to know. The government conspired with them, connived with them to steal from you during a major public health crisis. WFP, they are rogues. Perhaps, well, okay, the two million dollars that they gave them was their share of the money to play along. Right? Mm -hmm. That was the plan. WFP is a criminal organization. And I want you to help me so that we can spread this thing all over the place to embarrass them. We need to write their headquarters in Italy. That's where they're headquartered. Yeah, I think we need to do that first, that so they, they can give us more information because the ones on ground here in Liberia have already collided. WFP is a criminal organization, or at least WFP Liberia. Mm -hmm. We need WFP. We need to write the headquarters in Italy to let them know that their people con connived, conspired, and are complicit. In a stealing of tens of millions of dollars from the Liberian people. Somebody says, I gave you 30 million. You don't issue a statement to clarify that you did not receive 30 million? Yeah. There is a problem. There is a problem. I say, let's write the email right now. We'll send an email to the headquarters and in Italy. Wasting tapers, dear passing around, you hearing campaign after mismanaging our funds, doing all that we're doing with it, then he's here. Wasting tapers did not mismanage funds. Your leader team. Joe, we are talking money for Wasting Tapper. <laughs> he ate a little bit of it, but Joe, we are talking the rest of the money. We come here, I don't know. Wasting Tapper brave to play with Joe, we have money. Because you, you don't know Joe, we are. I know him. What's that, 30 million? 30 million dollars. I'm gonna stop telling you four district, man. They divide a few bags of rice and a few plastic bags full of beans. What guy? We got four districts. We need the four districts that receive food. Stop saying that thing. They did not get four districts. We saw them out for two or three days. You do, you don't take two or three days to feed four districts. No, you don't. What guy? Don't say four districts. You're helping them. They gave out a few bags of omelet rice. And, and a few cups of beans and a few uh, bottles of oil. That's what they did. They probably spent maybe two, three hundred thousand dollars. Two, three hundred thousand US dollars. They ate the rest of the money. Thirty million dollars. And then we have been now saying that, and, oh, we, we, we don't have information. We, we don't manage the program. How can you say now, several months later, that you do not manage the program when the government said they gave you thirty million dollars? Fellow Liberian, this is serious. Mm -hmm. This is freaking serious. These boys are so wicked. And these are the idiots who are passing around asking you to vote for them. These boys are so wicked that they stole $30 million from you during a crisis. During a global health crisis that is still raging hell. These boys stole $30 million. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. $30 million. And you're wondering why we call it a protest for November 16? Are you still wondering? $30 million gone? WFP is complicit? And you're wondering why we are protesting on November 16? Something has got to be wrong with you. 
If you are wondering why we are protesting on November 16th, then something is wrong with you. Because this year, this right year, is enough reason to come out on November 16th to protest in Monrovia and around the country. Enough reason. $30 million, gone. We're going to move to something else here. But we are writing WFP, the headquarters. They told us, the government said they gave them $30 million. WFP needs to address itself to this. They sat down in Liberia. When the WIA government said, we wired $30 million directly into WFP's account, WFP did not open their dirty mouth to say anything. They kept quiet. Bunch of criminals. That's what they did. They kept quiet. Because they had already bribed them. Hmm? They had already received a share of the money. That's what they say. That's what they. That's why they didn't say a word. They had already received a share of the money. This thing is serious. Now let's move on to something else here, Walker. Okay. So, over the weekend, Mariah Lukin, Mariah Lukin, that heartless, cruel, greedy woman who trafficked and sold 550 Liberian children into slavery, many of them into slavery, of course, into terrible homes where they have been abused. Of course, we've read stories in American publications where some of these children have been sexually and physically abused by the adopted parents or the adoptive parents. Adoptive parents. They've abused them sexually, uh, done all kinds of horrible things to them. 550 children at the price, at the unit price of $8,000 per child. And Mariah Lugan calls this processing fee. Hmm? Mm -hmm. That's, what, that's what she calls it, processing fee. 500, 550, I mean, uh, $8,000 per child for 550 children. She says it's processing fee. She defended this when we went public with this case, blew it wide open several months ago. We talked about it for several weeks. We brought many of the uh, the parents, we spoke with them on the show. Uh, we sent our people out into the hinterland, the, to places like, she made $4.4 million. That is correct, my friend, approximately. That is what Mariah Lucan made. Millions and millions of dollars from selling Liberian children abroad. And so today, Mariah Lucan is has been found guilty. The case was in court for over a year. For over a year, the case was in court. Nothing would happen. The case was just dragging on and on and on and on. And I'm not going to say, I'm not going to say we're taking credit for it, but we like to believe that when we blew the case wide open and forced Moran Lukin for the first time to publicly address this issue, she even threatened to sue me I think that is what caused the court to decide that no longer could they sit down and not act on this case. That they could not keep this case like that. So she's been found guilty. I am told the prosecution, the government will be pushing for 30 years. Okay. I mean for 20 years. Imprisonment. For wow. 30, yeah, 20 years. They're pushing for 20 years for her to go to prison. For child tra trafficking. Trafficking in person. TIP. That's what it's called. 20 years. Mariah Lincoln is supposed to go to jail. For 20 years. For selling these people's children. Now, we know that doesn't solve the situation. It would not bring these children back. It would not reunite these children with their parents. But it means something at least. In a country where justice is hard to come by. This means a lot. This means, this means a lot. 20 years in prison would mean a lot. 20 years, I hope they say, with no parole. No parole. 20 years in prison, no parole. That's what I'm hoping that will happen to Mariah Lukin. Now, fellow Liberians, the autopsies have been completed on the remains of Abel Peters, the Assistant Commissioner for Auditing at the LRA and his mentee, um, 
Somebody who you mentor is your mentee. And his mentee, Gifty Lama. Although the families said, the both families, that they're not interested in the audit, in the autopsies, any investigation. And the reason is very simple. The reason is simple because they do not, they don't trust the process and I don't blame them at all. So the government said, we're not in, we are not interested. I mean, the family said, we're not interested. Do whatever you want, but we are not interested. And, and I agree with the family because I don't trust the government. The government killed these people, so the same government cannot be the one uh, to be claiming to be carrying out a fair and independent investigation or, you know, an objective uh, investigation. Of course, of course not. We, we, or no, you know, that's not going to, that's not going to happen. No justice will be served. The killers will never be found. The first thing the government did, it made sure it contaminated the crime scene. That's the first thing the government did. Contaminated the crime scene and uh, to mess everything up. First of all, so yesterday I spoke with, um, but before I go there, let me just tell you this. Yesterday I got a call from a very reliable source. The, the pathologist, Dr. Benedict Coley, who conducted the autopsies on the remains of Abel Peters and Katie uh, Lama has concluded his autopsies. He wrote his report and submitted the report to the, to the government. Mm. The moment he submitted his report, he jumped on the plane and flew to Ghana. Mm. Hello, folks. Dr. Benedict Coley the pathologist who performed the autopsies on Gifty Lama and Abba Peters jumped on the plane and flew to Ghana after he submitted his findings. In fact, they say he's confused. He doesn't know what to do. Whether he wants to come back. Now, here's what I don't know. I'm told he tells people that the people were murdered. But whether he put that in his report is what I cannot say. Let me repeat myself. Let me repeat myself. Dr. Benedict Coley, the pathologist who happens to be married to George Weir's, I, I want to call her baby mama because they had a child who is now 14 years old, a 14 year old daughter. Her name is, uh, the woman herself, her name is Theodosia Slewion Coley. She is the chairperson of the National AIDS Commission. Yes. She and we have a 14-year-old daughter that we are abandoned all those years ago. This 14-year-old child grew up with Dr. Benedict Coley. Dr. Coley. Dr. Coley completed the autopsy, submitted the report to the government, got on the plane and went to Ghana, and he's telling friends and family that he's not sure he wants to come back to Liberia right now. Hmm. Some say he's returning on Wednesday of this week, which is the day after tomorrow, but they're not even certain that he's going to come back on Wednesday. Now listen to this. Listen to this. Benedict Coley has said to people close to him that Abbott Peters and Gifty Lama were murdered according to his findings during the autopsy. They didn't die of any natural causes. He said they were murdered. But the error is this. Did he include, was that his finding, his conclusion in his autopsy report? Nobody knows. The report has been submitted to the government. They, they have the report. They, they, they've had it for days now. The Ministry of Justice has the autopsy report, folks. Musa D knows. Now, fellow Liberians, don't we deserve to see the autopsy re report, Black Guy? We do. Yeah, we do. This is a public interest matter. Uh, 
And the, the funny part about it, because I listened to the police postman this morning saying that they will be um, receiving a autopsy report in the next few days. That's not true. <laughs> They're playing games. The autopsy report was submitted ever since. Benedict Coley jumped on the plane, went to Ghana. Ghana is why he and George Weir's, uh, he and the, 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 the mother of George Weir's 14-year-old daughter, who happens to be his wife, that's why they live for many, many years. Benedict Coley went to school in Ghana and all. I think that's why he studied. So that's why he's gone. Now he's wondering whether he should return to Liberia anytime soon. Why is he a friend? Did he include in his report that these people were murdered? Now that is exactly what the government does not want. Why do you think they chose him? The government, the government specifically chose Benedict Coley because Benedict Coley is married to a woman who George Ria made a senior government official who happens to have a 14-year-old daughter for George Ria. That's why they chose Benedict Coley. Because Benedict Coley, whether he likes it or not, he has ties to George Ria. George Ria's daughter lived with him in the household for many, many years. So we want to see the autopsy report. Benedict Coley has already told people in private and in confidence that Abbott Peters and Gabriel Lama were murdered in cold blood. Do you want to know who murdered them? The government murdered them. We already know that. This is only confirmation. Scientific, empirical confirmation. But as to who who the killer were or the killers? That's what we're not going to know. But we know it was a government that had them murdered in cold blood. So the issue is will the government publish the autopsy report? The family, the both families have said they are not interested in an investigation, they know nothing will come of it. Yesterday, I spoke with two relatives of the late Gifty Lama. In fact, the very close siblings, her brother and her sister. They are here in the United States. I spoke with them yesterday. Man, it was difficult speaking with those people, Bwaka. They were crying on the phone. It was difficult, especially the sister. My heart was broken just hearing them. Crying on the, on the phone. They don't know what to do. I mean, your loved one gets murdered in cold blood. Young, young lady. Gifty was young. Promising. With a whole life ahead of her. Murdered in cold blood. Murder in cold blood. And the family, they don't know what to do. The family of Peters, the family of Gifty, they don't know what to do. And so yesterday I told them, at least what you can do, because the government is not interested in investigating, because they murdered these people. So they don't want the truth to come out. I told them, hey, write the companies. Gifty was a subscriber of Lone Star Salon TN and a subscriber of Orange Liberia. I told them, write the both companies, Orange and Lone Star, and request the call logs of Gifty. You want to see the call logs? You want to see the last calls Gifty received? How long she spoke with the person? You want to do that? That's what I told them yesterday. They're going to do that. And here is what I think. If the husband requests, writes and requests of Lone Star and of Orange to furnish him with the call logs of his late wife for, say, 24 hours before death, 24 hours before death, Lone Star and Orange can't say no. They should not say no. And then we'll be, I told him, I said, if you write Lone Star and Orange to request the call logs and they will refuse, I, Henry Pedro Costa, will attack them. I was very clear. Let me repeat myself. 
You run Lone Star Cell. If the family, if they take my advice and they write Lone Star Cell and they write around requesting the call law and they refuse to get the call law, I will charge them with complicity with the government to cover up murder. I'm saying it right now. I'm not even waiting for them to write for us. You know how the, the government has their cell phones? When they write the family, I mean the companies, Loom Star and Orange, and they refuse to provide the call logs because they are afraid of the government, I would charge them with complicity to complicity and conspiracy to cover up murder. UBA is already charged with that one. UBA. And a daughter is saying only the court can order it. The daughter did a different case. When a case is in court, the court may subpoena it or may request that the court law be made available. This is different. This is a wife. This is the this is the man's wife. The man's wife died under mysterious circumstances. So the man may write a request. That different my man. This is the man's wife. You, you, you understand? This is not just, I'm not going to look start to ask for them to give me a Boga Camara's call law. No. But Gifty Lama was the wife of Sylvester Lama. Sylvester Lama has the, 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 he has the authority to request for his wife's call law. Especially since his wife is dead. First time she got murdered, so we need to know the person. Yeah. So what will Lung Star say or what will Oran say? Oh, we are sorry, we can't furnish, we can't give you it because it will be violating your wife's private privacy. Your, your murdered wife. So I told them, put the companies on the defensive. Let them say we can't give you it. Oh, somebody, I'm a complete lawyer. You can't just write a company saying, no, you're wrong. This is the man's wife. She is dead. She died under mysterious circumstances. Absolutely likely a murder victim. So this is different. This is not just me going and saying, oh, you give my wife's call off. This is different. So write the company. Let the company tell you they can't give you the call off. Because the police investigating, you're gonna tell Mr. Sylvester Lama that the grieving husband of Gifty Lama? Yeah, who have no trust within the police. Yeah, you're gonna tell him that that I want my wife's call law, and then you're gonna say no, I can't give you your wife's call law, your dead murdered wife. I can't give you her call law. I'm trying to protect the privacy of your murdered wife. This is different. This is, this is a family. Why you think when somebody dies, you can go to the bank as they close the next of kin, as the wife or the husband, when, if your wife has a bank account, the bank can give you access to the account once, your, once that person dies. Why do you think that they, 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 they do that? Did you give it? I, I want to see the law. Somebody correct me if I am wrong. But in my layman's thinking, Mr. Lama has the authorization to request his wife's call law. He's the closest next of kin. He's a husband recognized by the law. What kind of privacy? Dead person get privacy? Huh? Uh, you want to talk about dead person? The person was murdered. You're not talking about privacy, privacy. The family wants to know. Let Luke Star say no, to the family, no. She got murdered. That's the problem. Yeah. If she were alive, of course not. Then the companies do not have to give him the call logs. If Gifty were alive, if Abba Peters were alive, his wife cannot request it. But dead, murdered, and you said no, Look what UBA did. UBA, the bank, up Broad Street. They had their cameras, their CCTV camera. One of it was directly pointed 
in the direction of the vehicle where they were found, murdered and dumped in their vehicle. To make it look like the boba then sat down in the car and died. Suddenly, two healthy people just sit in a car and die? What happened? Yeah. <laughs> two healthy people just sit in a car on Broad Street and die. Very, very unlikely. Extremely, extremely unlikely. I don't believe it. So, this is what happened. So let Mr. Sylvester Lama write. In fact, use your lawyer to write. Don't write yourself. Use your lawyer. And let Oran say no. Let Oran say no. We can't give you the call log. It, it belongs to your murder wife. Let Long Sassel say no. We can't give you the call log. They say they saw sand all on the people. Beach sand. Sand from the beach. So Gifty then went on the beach and came back sat in the car and died. That's what happened, right? They murdered them on the beach, possibly. Drove them there and parked the car. That's what they did. You being refused to get the CCTV footage, my dear brother Thomas Crow, that's what you're asking? They said they would not get the footage. In fact, they lied. Look, Georgia has made the country, everybody's a friend. UBA said our camera did not capture it. How the hell can your camera be pointed in my direction and it's functional, but it did not capture me? My boy, y'all please bring that one. They say the, they say the camera again reached that far to capture what happened at night. My man, the camera, the car where the people were dumped was parked right in front of the camera. The UBA camera was pointed directly toward the vehicle. How the hell then did the camera not capture it? That is the thing. UBA issued a press release. We have no uh, CCTV footage of the incident. Our camera did not capture it. That is a bloody lie. A bloody lie. Because UBA is scared. The government has made everybody afraid. Everybody with a tail between their legs. By the time you murder a few people, everybody else gets afraid that they're going to be murdered. That, 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 that's what happens, my guy. The moment the government starts to murder people, everybody starts getting scared. But I tell, I trust me. Let me finish my graduation in May and move into Liberia. I will spend most of my time in Liberia. We will see. What are some of us will be afraid? You and you and you will see. You do what I said here and be talking. I graduated in May, by the grace of God, I'm spending most of my time in Liberia. I will do my master's online. I will spend that thing you're doing, you're scared. All the people got a tape between their legs. We're not, we're not all that nonsense. I will be in Liberia from May. The moment I graduate in May, I enroll to do my master's online, I will be in Liberia. We'll see. Everybody getting scared, boy. Okay? Everybody's scared of the government. Everybody. Put your tape between your legs because they murder some people. Yeah. And to my house, you come to my house in the night. First of all, you will not catch me outside in the night to go say you're going to send men to go try to murder me. You, you're going to have to come to my house. Then we'll see who will get killed. We cannot depend on the international community. They know everything that's happening in the country, yet they will take no action. No action at all. So people are scared. This is what the government wants. The government wants you to be a friend. That's why they murder people in cold blood right in front of you so you can get a friend. This is what they want to do. And they are succeeding, brother. They're scaring a lot of people. Yeah. But I will come home in May by the grace of God. Y'all gonna catch me from our IA. Huh? <laughs> Y'all gonna catch me at our IA and charge me with lesser passé issue when you can't prosecute people for selling our passports and diplomatic positions to criminals. Everybody will not succumb to you. You may succeed in intimidating some people. But you cannot intimidate Henry Foster. 
Not possible. When I look at people like George Weir and McGill, look at those idiots. That those people will, will be the ones to make me a friend? Come to my house in the night and say you want to come make it look like armed robbers attack me. If I don't kill them in cold blood, with, you know, I can't kill a fly, oh, but you send somebody to try to kill me? You send somebody to try to kill me and I have the upper hand. Oh, trust me, I will have the upper hand because I'll be well fortified and waiting for you to come. And when I'm killing you, I will kill you with pleasure. When I'm done killing you, I will go live. I'm not going to You, Anybody who attempts to cause me harm, physical harm, with the intent of taking away my life, I can kill you with pleasure. Pleasure. Perhaps I will find a bottle of champagne and drink it right over your body. I'm telling you something serious. I can do that. You have to make these people know that they cannot intimidate all of us into silence and weakness by their fear tactics, murdering people in cold blood. That is their strategy. They kill a few people, then everybody gets afraid. Bugger. Everybody gets afraid. Nobody wants to stand up to them. That is their strategy. But it will not work with everybody. Now, Tanji Banto wrote a post. Before we go to the phone lines, I want to read that post. Somebody said, I watch my words. Why you go watch my words? I'm talking about self-defense. You watch your words. Something wrong with you? And uh, Richard, uh, Richard Buster. Something wrong with you? You know what they call self-defense? You hear your womb, somebody come trying to kill you, you kill them, and you say, watch, watch your words? What's wrong with you? You are, you are my fan, but I need to educate you. There's something called self-defense. If somebody tries to kill you in your home, you kill them. You kill them with pleasure. I cannot kill a fly. But if you come to my house or you attack me somewhere with the intent of causing me harm, I will kill you with such pleasure you will not even believe it. What are you talking about? Somebody comes to try to kill you and then you kill them. Then you say, oh, Costa, watch your words. Is there the same fear? Nonsense. Come try to attack me. And see what I, I will sit on there. And have the upper hand sit down. Oh, but I will be waiting for you. If you your team want to go to Liberia, I can be there empty with nothing. I can hear go there and my wife be praying to God. Oh, God, protect me as I'm about to go to bed. God will protect me, yes. But you must help yourself first. You think I can be in, in Liberia? You think I want to go like bro? I can hear the name of how I say, oh, I, I hear God will protect me. Yeah, everything will be fine. Yeah, right. Somebody comes to my house to try to kill me, I will kill you and I will drink beer over your body. Beer. And I will go live. I will go live over, over your dead body. I say, yeah, everybody getting scared. Everybody getting scared. Because they murdered a few people. They murdered about two Innes. Cold blood. Nothing came of it. Now they murdered four other people. Everybody's scared and nobody wants to talk. Nobody wants to talk. I told Musa Dean in one of our meetings during the, 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 the December 30th protest, which eventually happened on January 6th. I said, Musa Dean, you're saying anybody to my house, I will kill them. I will shoot them. He said, oh, you got gone. I said, yes, I have a gun. I told Musa Dean in the meeting when the Liberal Council of Churches, I told him, you yes, if your people send anybody to my house, I will shoot them, I will kill them in self-defense. Self-defense to my house to attack me, I'll kill you. He said, Oh, you got gun. I said, Yes, I have a gun. I said it in front of the people. Moali was saying right there, oh man, me, I get gun. Moali was saying that Me, I scared a gun. I said, I have a gun. Send people to my house. Come try to kill me. Then if God allows me to have the upper hand, I'm going to let you live. Yeah, right. I'll kill you. With pleasure. And God said, will say, my son, you did a great job. God said, will say that. Self-defense. That's what the law provides them. Now, let me say this. Tanti Banto. George Weir's girlfriend, Tanti Banto. Now, why do I call her that way? Because Tanti herself said it on Facebook. Allah Baga. Nobody accused Tanti Bando of being George Weir's girlfriend. She said it herself. 
-hmm. on Facebook many, many times. And everybody knows that. Except you're not more real person. And the only way you're not no tiny bando that job you get from. But they've been going a long, long time. She herself said it on Facebook. But you know what? Tanti Bando wrote a post the other day. And I'm, I'm liking this girl. I'm really liking her. When I say liking her, not in a romantic sense, I beg you. Tanti Bando trouble not for Ryan. <laughs> she and myself could not survive a day. <laughs> no way. We could not survive a day together. Yeah, if that was even possible. But I'm liking her. I'm, I'm liking her. Because she had her. But she spoke the truth in this particular post. And you know, she did not only do the post, but she did a video as well. She posted a video. I mean, she posted a short video from the 2017 campaign trail. Which is evidence to support yeah. what she said. I'm going to read Tanti Banjo's post before we go to the phone lines to take some calls. Tanji Banto is the one who had the issue with Safa May Gray, George Rias, other girlfriend, who is the president of the National Oil Company of Liberia, who doesn't know her left from her right. Friske Lager, Tanji Banto is the one who's been dealing with Safa. Tanji Banto has successfully made Safa quiet. So Tanji did this post one day ago. About two days now. Today makes it two days. This post is interesting. And I'm going to read the post for you. And she posted a video underneath the post. Let me read the post. This is George Rhea's girlfriend. Doing this post about George Rhea. This girl was on the camping trail with George Rhea. All over the place. I'm reading the post now. I remember simplicity. Human capacity. Understanding the needs of the people. Hmm. On this day, somewhere deep in Bond County, campaign 2017, he said, Tangi, my feet are hurting. That he and I just real. Tangi is saying, George Real to her, this is George Real she's talking about. Mm -hmm. He said, Tangi, my feet are hurting so bad, I wouldn't be able to get out of the car. Chief, you will rest when they make the winner's announcement. That's what she told him after he said his feet were hurting so bad that he wouldn't be able to get out of the car. She said to him, Chief, you will rest when they make the announcement about the, about the winner. He saw this beautiful grandmother calling his name and told his driver to stop the car. The video is here. That Tanji is talking about. Tanji kept at that moment. There was this diminutive grandmother holding her stick, huh? hunched over. And she was calling George Mia. And George Mia got out of the car and walked over to her and gave her something. I don't know whatever it is he gave her, but he gave the old man something. It's Tanji posted the video as evidence to show that she was there. Let me read. He saw this beautiful grandmother calling his name. And, he, and told his driver to stop the car. He got out and walked to express his love. I've always wondered if the people around the president would ever allow him to revisit some of these villages and reconnect with his people or better yet, tell him the reality we are faced with on a daily basis. This is Tangi Banto. Tell me the job we got out of the car. The video is here. on the thing. Jovia, you see Jovia walking to the old lady. He gave her something. Whatever it is he gave her, I don't know. But he handed something to her. Thank you, Rice Further. Can you allow him the opportunity to sit with 20 of his citizens with, with, without being paid? Not anymore. And let them express. Thank you, sir. Let me sit down with citizens who are not paid. You know, the people who you, you don't pay their money, you don't bribe them to try to come on. Sit down with 20 of a citizen without being paid and let them express the harsh reality of this financial crisis we, the lay Matthew, stuck with. Tanji said, you let the man sit down with his people. I will show you the video. You don't, you don't worry. I'll play the video so you can watch it. Tanji said, 
You let the man sit down with his people lay. Let them express themselves to him. The harsh reality that we, she put herself there, we the little men are stuck with. Can those men and women who have gossip time on their hands allow the president to speak to us on a platform that feels humor and highly connected? Can you say, Yo, can you please let the man talk to us directly? And make girlfriend talking so on Facebook. Yeah. I know people like to say, let's pray for Liberia. But I have had four generations of my family say the same prayers. And it's 2020. Can you say four generations? Yeah. Four generations. Can't you say, now you need to you. It's coming for all of us. Four generations of our family said, yeah, pray. Let's pray for Liberia. Liberia can change. Hmm. Tanji Bandos go for the everything at this point looks like a hustle. And if you're not part of the hustle cartel, I'm sorry, it's fuck you. These are her words, not mine. Sorry, folks. Tanji say, Tanji say, if you are not part of the hustle cartel, the whole government are hustle cartel. She says, if you are not part of the hustle cartel, I'm sorry, it's Fuck you. Which means we don't give a hell about you. It's just, it's, it's, it's about us. Tanji writes further. Imagine a minister working directly under the president has his own full soldiers. You get that? Everybody get their own full soldier. Imagine a minister working directly under the president has his own full soldiers. A city mayor has his own full soldiers. Mr. President, our lives matter. And if you don't take total control of the power we, the people, granted you, trust me, those very power greedy people who are giving you misinformation about the reality will come back for the 10% power you have left. You, you have left. Tanji is saying, George, we have only had 10% of the power from the people. What? This is we as girlfriend. No, but the question that she's been, she's been with in the system, so she she knows, oh, she knows the people. Thank you, Pastor Rice Father. Three ministers want to be president. She said three of them want to be president. Minister Miguel, uh, Bill Trawe. She said they want to. Yeah, Samuel Twe. She said three of them. Natalia Miguel, Bill Trawe, and Samuel Twe. She says they want to be president. George, she called him George. George, you better shine your eyes because what we see and know is far from your knowledge and understanding. Get some meaningful people who can help you on a temporary basis and see how much of a turnaround you will get. Forget this. You're not sedition shit. She's telling George we have to forget this. You, you, you're not, you know, they got anything. You are not sedition. She's telling you to forget that. She says, forget that you are not sedition shit. Fuck it. These seditions are suffering the most. This is Tangi Banto, my people. George Mia's girlfriend. She said it herself. Everybody knows it. But she said it herself. So I'm not accusing her. She says it with pride, dignity. Look. With all due respect in politics, there are no permanent friends and permanent enemies. It's interest. Don't allow pride and ego to keep this drowning ship from being safe. Hello, what did Tanji say? Wow. Don't allow pride, pride and ego. She said in Georgia to not allow his pride and his ego to keep this drowning ship from being saved. Have a blessed weekend and remember, we hold you responsible for everything. She doesn't tell me out. Remember, we hold you responsible for everything, even the ones you don't know about. Not knowing as a leader is also a crime. Hello? Tanji Banto says, when you are a leader, you can't say, I don't know. 
Once you are in charge, it also the run. Then this is a video Tanji Vando posted. Tanji is so right. Tanji could not be more right. Now, what guy? I have the video here. I'm gonna play. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna play the video. This is George Ria. He gets out. If, if you can see the video, let me know. I have played the video. This is on a campaign trail. George Ria is the one obviously wearing the blue, the blue suit. And uh, let me know if you can see the video, please. This is the old lady. And you see George Ria walking up to her. Do you see the video, folks? Let me know. The children will soon start calling me uh, or calling Tanti enemy of the state again. Yeah, John, we are meeting the old man. Yeah. Do you see the video? Somebody can talk. There is George, we are meeting the old man. Damn it. I got 1,500 people watching, and one person can open their mouth to tell me they're watching the video. Talk it. I'm holding my hand out like that. I can watch the damn video. I can open your mouth and tell me that. <laughs> Yeah, man. That's the video Tanji posted. She was with him during the campaign. He got out of the car. He walked over to this old lady and he handed her something. Yeah. Tanji Bantu. Let's go to the phone lines and take some calls. You're listening to the Gospel Show. This is the nation's premier platform where we discuss the issues that matter. And of course, we have a letter from WFP and even from WFP saying that they know nothing about the food distribution. They have no control. They do not manage it. Which contradicts everything the government said to us. That they had given WFP $30 million to do food distribution and the money was directly wired in WFP's account. This is what that dry idiot called Eugene Nangbe told us. That Salama Swan called Eugene Nangbe, this is what he told us. That the government wired $30 million directly into WFP's bank account. Today, WFP tells us that they do not manage the program, they know nothing of the status of the program. Let's go to the lines and take some calls. Tanji Bando, George Weah's girlfriend, who says it herself on social media, who attacks her co, her, her mates. Safwa, she said it. She said, George, she, Safwa, she said it. She, Tanji Bando, calls Safwa her, her mate. Tanji Bando says here on Facebook that George Weah is messing up. Tanji Bando goes further to say that George Weah has only 10% of the power that they give him. Tanji Bato, Tanami, Tanji Bato. Let's go to the phone lines and take some calls. Let's go to the line. Tanji Bato, Joe, we are own girlfriend. I'm going to spell a name for you, Tanji Bato. You can't even spell. So my ad will spell it then. You know how to spell Tanji? Tanji again. Talk it, man. T A N G I E. Tanji. T A N. Bato. Spell Bato. You know how to spell. Yeah. P N T O. Tanji Bando, that's your name. Go right, we'll find on Facebook. Talk it, man. Yeah, leave me alone. I'm be spelling for here. Oh. and the WhatsApp number is plus two three one triple eight six two four one seven one. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, you know where you calling from? Yeah. Welcome. <laughs> Morning. Yeah. 
people just draw war because of the constitution change according to them and, and, and cheating on election. But he had the audacity yesterday to open his mouth to say this is what they want to do. But this is what's going on in Africa today. They got the, uh, uh, the Apple Watch, they have gone to uh, Abidjan for three times. Uh, uh, um, the other guy went to uh, Ghana the other day, he came back and they are still discussing, they did it in Guinea. We should open our eyes, we are raising a snake. We are going to be bigger. The four people that he killed is nothing. Alright, yeah, thank you. Baga, let's keep it on a minute, please. Okay. I, I presume you have lots of callers. Let's keep it on a minute. We, so much. Uh, we talk about a lot of things here. We obviously have a lot of people who want to call and chime in on the com on the conversation. Let's take more calls. All right. So one minute per caller. Let's take Noah Zawu gives it. Noah, good morning. Welcome. Good morning, Pastor. Good morning, Waka. Good morning to our Yafra Uh Let me just inform you that. Speaking on what you're talking about concerning the government uh, 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 to uh, continue with murdering people, do you know what we're calling right now is on Joy FM, a lighting, escaping an assassination attempt last night. She right now on Joy FM confirming that the nearly killed last night. And she mentioned the civil mayor of Monrovia to be late. To, to, to uh, the situation. So, the thing is, I don't know what kind of country we find ourselves currently, where they just want to get rid of all of the critical voices in this country. When you break away, they get rid of, they get rid of you. And when you speak the truth, they get rid of you. When you expose them, they get rid of you. And moving forward in conclusion, I also want to let you know that they had a meeting yesterday. Something that you said on the show that during the election day, we will get some radio stations that you will be on that night. Okay. They are vowed that any radio station you appear on, they will close it down. That's what they discussed in the meeting. All right. Thank, Thank you so much, Noah Zao Gibson. We'll take more calls. Uh, keep them coming in. One minute per caller 0770 102 102 102 102 and the WhatsApp number is plus two three one triple eight six two four one seven one. Let's take somebody from the US. Good morning, welcome. Hey, how are you doing? I'm George. Good morning, your name. My name is George Kemu. I call you from Las Vegas, Nevada. Okay, welcome, Mr. Kemu. Now take somebody from line one. Good morning. Okay, we miss up on our caller. Let's take this person. Uh, good morning. Good morning, Father. Good morning, Costa. This is Samka Fonin. Today I'm calling from Blobby. Okay, Samka, welcome. Right. Yeah. Thank you very much. Regarding the, the, the wave of killings in the country, the three individuals that I've mentioned, one of them happened to be my nephew, the Shafa Bonabo. She mostly is operating in Kuhu's song.
I said, thank you. Thank you very much. Baga Hukuro. I need to talk about that. That reminds me. It was on our agenda this morning. And <clears throat> Big Brother Samuka Kone, you just reminded me. How the hell could I forget? We have so many to talk about. I spoke with the aunt of Siafa. Siafa. I spoke with his aunt. They used to call him Banner. He used to live at a tire shop in Broadville. How do you think I know this? Siafa was a smart young man. I think, if I'm not mistaken, he was 32 years old or so, or 33 years old. Siafa learned how to repair stuff. He was a, he was a mechanical repair man. He could fix generators and this and all that kind of stuff. But as they used to call him, was contracted by Sim Sim Moses. That's how, that's, that's how everybody calls him. Sim 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 Moses hired Bana and two other young men. That's true. Samuka Conan as his nephew because I spoke with your big brother. Samuka, I spoke with your big brother, uh, uh, um, Bill Conan, Adam Bill Conan, former representative from uh, uh, Bond County. Adam Bill Conan. I had a long conversation with Adam Bill Conan over the weekend. We spoke for over 20 minutes. Adam Bill Conan led a team up there. He went by way of handy up there to go and investigate what happened. Boagai, Bana was a very, they say, this is, this is a story. Folks, this is very, very interesting and it's sad. Very sad. St. Moses hired Bana. And two other young men to go up to his place. This is somewhere in Bomi. So you gotta cross the river and all that kind of stuff. To go there to repair his machine. They say he's doing an illicit diamond mining operation there. According to what I've been told. So Siafa or Bana, as they call him, went up there. To repair the machines. They go and according to the story, after repairing the machines, I think they say he called his children's mother to say he he was done and he was about to return to, to town. They say they have to cross a river using a canoe. According to the story, according to what the family told me, the family. They called St. Moses to arrange the canoe for them to return. And they said, St. Moses said it was late. They should, they should stay there until the next day before they can cross the river to come back. That's what they said. Then all of a sudden, they get word that Siapa and the two other boys, in fact, they said there were six, but then, of course, it will be discovered that they said there were three rather than six. They were attempting to cross late at night, according to the word, and the, and the canoe capsized. The canoe supposedly capsized. And three of them survived, and the other three supposedly got drowned. That's what they said. Now, St. Moses, who contracted Siapa or Bana to go up there to work on his machines, he did not have the courtesy, the decency to go to the families personally and tell them. They say he started calling them on the phone on different, different numbers according to, according to the family to say that their nephew or their son, Siafa and the two other boys had drowned. And he didn't know about it. He wasn't there and he told them to wait the next day but he didn't wait. Then what happened? Okay. Then St. Moses stopped calling them. So the family decided to organize an expedition to go up there to inquire. And they went up there. When former representative Adam Bill Conner went up there, he told me that he realized that there was no search and rescue party. Nobody was working to try to find these people. In fact, he said that the town commissioner and the other people in the town told him that there was no food. Simosis had not provided any food and liquor. So the people like to catch their head. Good, bugger. 
They let them catch the head good before they start, you know, looking. This is the soil. But they started, but according to what the family has discovered, one of the families, at least, the family of Bana, that the place they say the people got drowned from, it's not possible, according to the story. Nobody in the town even wants to believe that anybody got drowned. In the area, because they would know where the people who were controlling the canoe, they can't find the people. Mm. The people who were supposed to, I not crossed the river before. I crossed the river into Sierra Leone from Liberia. That, that's how I left the country. We had to go to the nearby village, right there on the river bank, wake the people up at around 11 30 in the night, 11 30 p.m. We got into the canoe. And they crossed us to the Sierra Leone side. And they came back with a canoe. So where were the people who were operating the canoe? They can't find them. Boy, hmm. The people supposedly operating the canoe cannot be found. Then, while the family started to demand justice, they went to Simosa funeral home. But you saw those videos, right, Boy, Sure. They were demanding justice. See, Moses attempted crossing over into Sierra Leone on Thursday night. Hello? St. Moses attempted crossing into Sierra Leone on Thursday night and he was captured at the border point while trying to cross over. They arrested him. He was crossing over like me. I mean, for me, not less it passe. Drug y'all wanted to harm me, but less it passe. For a document that is less than 500 librarian dollars. See, Moses, there are three human beings beneath. Three human beings. See, Moses was arrested at the border. And said, they say, Thursday night, they brought him as we speak. He is at the police headquarters. Central. Wagan. Okay. See, Moses was called at the border. Attempting to cross over into Sierra Leone. But Bogan, mm. why would he be running away? Mm. If he didn't do anything. You don't care the people you say the, the, the canoe capsized. They went there. Adam Bill Corner went there. He spoke with me and gave me a full report on Saturday or Sunday. No, it was not Sunday. I believe it was on Friday. Friday, I had a long conversation with Adam Bill Conner. He and his sister here in the States, or his cousin. Bill Conner went there. They can't find the place where the canoe capsized. They can't find the people who operated the canoe. Boy, if you go to a village and a canoe, like remember, it's a kino, but it's not kino. I will not call it that way. It's canoe. A canoe capsizes and people get drowned. Are you going to say you will not find the people who are operating the canoe? You will. You will not hear the whole time or three, three people die here. Yeah? You will. So they canoe caps out and they can't find the people there. The whole valley, the whole area, nobody knows what canoe caps out in. Oh! How is it that a canoe would capsize? The thing is, why was he running away? Now, boy, the reason I didn't talk anything about this thing eh, is I didn't have the facts. You understand me? Let's go back to the phone lines. All right. So I didn't have the facts. But I spoke with the family because somebody reached out to me and said, because we ain't you talking nothing about this thing. I said, well, I don't know nothing. I don't talk about things when I don't know about them. And that's, that's what we try to do. If we got the facts, we will not talk. Even if everybody else is talking, we will not talk. Good morning. Why was he trying to escape? Welcome. 
Whenever we have quota, we have COP. And so, uh, the CPP will have been quoted two days from now. Up to now, no momentum. No momentum in time. And all this is ridiculous thing happening. To say that the COP, the food of body that said it by the people. Yeah. I don't know why it's what we did. We wrote, we wrote, there is SP and there is SP are getting us clear inside. Now, yes, in the case that they could rule there, they could now with the government and I advise that if there is any legal uh, remedy, the COP to pursue legal remedy or if there is anything that we can do, legal get on the measure will wait and every uh, uh, office will, will be seen out of it until the kill go. They can say what they say, they can't offer that job first. Let's do that. You can't lie to the people that you receive such a measure. They would have called later than you can do. You can show us all that yes, you all right. Thank you so much, Mohammed. Let me take somebody from the WhatsApp now. Also, uh, we have to make way for them. Uh, our brother from Nigeria. Good morning. Welcome. You are live. Go ahead. a few days ago, over the weekend. I cannot say they're dead. I cannot. I don't know where they are. I, I don't know whether they're dead. And if they're dead, who killed them? Whether they got drowned, whether they didn't get... There's too much. That, too, too many questions need to be answered. But I think Simosa did not do himself justice. I'm going to be very, very fair. Simosa should have publicly addressed this issue. But you know how long it took? People kept going to your funeral home and protesting. He was quiet. Yeah. He did not do himself justice. He did not do himself justice. He should have spoken out from the very beginning. My people, this is what happened. Huh? These boys went to work for me. And I was not there. This is what I'm hearing. Because he was not there. According to the story, he, was, he, was, he sent them to work for him. So, but for him to have kept quiet. Eh? For him, now all these stories that they called him to the border and blah, blah, blah. You know, I, you know yeah. Because he's, he's in police custody right now. And according to the story, he got arrested at the border trying to escape. But all of this is happening because he wasn't not talking. He never said a word. What guy? For God's sake, what guy? You are accused of killing people. Mm -hmm. And you don't say a word in your own defense to explain your side of the story and to help the family investigate and find these people. That's that's a, that's that's what he messed up, and he has himself to blame. Yeah, yeah, no, yeah. I, I don't want to talk to him. Sir. Well, he should be talking to the public. Sure. See, Moses should be talking to the Liberian public. They say you try to run away, run away, run away, run away. You can't talk. Baga, they say you try to run away. You can't say a word. What wrong with you? I mean, I feel sorry for the man, man. Let go take calls there. How can I be sorry for somebody like that? They say you try to run, 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 run away. You can't talk nothing. They say you kill people. You can't, you can't talk nothing. See, Moses not bobo. <laughs> See, Moses is not a bobo. Let, let's take calls there. All right, let's take this question. Good morning. Good morning. Hello. Yeah, good morning. Where are you calling from? Good afternoon. I'm calling from Morovia, Liberia. My name is Tamara. I'm Shepard Little Stone. What is this? You said? 
And if it's not that, I'm Siapa Ole Sister. I'm calling from the real time shop right now. Siapa, so who is Siapa? Siapa is one of those that are involved? One of the big things right now that, that, that is missing. Okay. Yeah, give her, give her a little information about your brother. So on Thursday, he called me and he told me that um, most they had a contract for him. You know, I was on my way back down for vacation. And I told him, um, he sure he's going to get everything together before I get there. He said, yes. He said, but uh, I tell you, it's three errands. He said, I won't be able to make all three because the traffic. So I will just do one. I said, okay, no problem. You can do one just because we have to pick up and then do what you have to do. But we do what kind of good legal um, 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 Moses, and then I told him, I said, we're already, I said, but that's not a lot of traffic. And then I said, but did you tell him really that? Because I played for F Angel. I want an F Angel um, player, so I was, I was like shocked. I said, but well, how did he know you did the tuition job? So tell him about me. He said, okay, but do I have to say that? I said, yeah, sure, go ahead and tell him. And I also, for some reason, that just came to my head to tell him, because when I was playing for F Angel, I had a lot of women. And I, nothing happened to me though I stayed over that year, and nothing happened to me. I, I traveled to the state. But it's a comeback application to so hear that my brother didn't work to Tuma Village. He went over all the way behind go back. So I'm shocked and disappointed to know that Moses is involved to this thing. I can't call him, call him, give him different numbers. He had people answer and say stuff to me, and I finally got him, got to talk to him. Moses just told me all kinds of things that he couldn't believe. And I was there calling him Uncle Moses to bring my brother back. And he told me that he and my brother went into a fight because my brother got done doing the work. The money was too, too much. My brother charging a lot of money. Why my brother charging three hundred? I said, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Did he not do your job right? He said, oh, yes, you did a job. I said, was it not good? He said, oh, yes. But what's the matter? Why? He's trying to walk through the $300. You can afford it. You can afford it. He's looking for his daily bread. Okay? He can afford it. And the question I ask him over and over, you can give me an answer. I want you to come on media to tell us what really went wrong because it's, it's not normal. For somebody with my brother can swing. Okay? My brother and my dad have a plan to, to do a And they said the boy can swing go. He is a, a lady from where corner, yeah. He's, he's, he's a bit crossing that river. Boy got to go on our feet. What job we are saying? You'll be a body island today. Okay? That's the only one I heard that he left him water. That's the street. Boy, they said the boy can swing by the way. Yeah, and what the 
my dear, we don't know all of that yet. You see, we got to be fair and objective. We don't know that. But this is it. Sin Moses did not do I see you're telling me say he appeared on the song on a face go show that the one that says Sin Moses appeared on. Are you serious? Sin Moses appeared on some kind of face go show. Some kind of face go show who only a few thousand people can watch it. Then they play you will go talk. What kind? <laughs> people accusing you of killing their children. You will go, you will you keep quiet for days and days and days. Then you go on some kind of Facebook show that only a few people can watch. They may, they, they may see what, what guy? They may not see us. No, no. See Moses, somebody sent me a number. Be better with all due respect to you. I'm not calling Sin Moses. I am not going to call him. I will not call Sin Moses with all due respect to you. Sin Moses should have spoken out from day one. What guy? All these talks that Sin Moses were arrested, you are in police custody. We've heard all these things. They say that yesterday he finally spoke out on some kind of Facebook show. They men are serious, man. Man, they, that let's take uh, three more calls and close. They men are serious. I'm not talking to him. What are you calling him for? Mm. So you got people believing that it is possible that something could that the book could have gotten drowned. Anything is possible. It is possible. But they were a looking fishy. You're not talking. They say you're trying to run or run or run away. They said they, they said that, and you're not saying nothing about any, 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 anything. Well, all due respect, I'm not, I'm not gonna call him. I'm not gonna call him because he should be the one calling. That, that means you're going. What? No. We have a platform. You, you, you got the media in Liberia. Call a big press conference. Address the media. Lay out the circumstances. How you came in touch with these boys? Why you you contracted them? Why you sent them there? What you sent them there to do? The day they went? What happened? Everything. Explain it. Cause of your call law. He said he spoke with the boys on the phone. He spoke with Siava Bana. He told Bana, don't go. You don't cross the river. We want to see the call law. And you understand, Bana? Go and print your call law and publish it. You said you spoke with Bana on the, on the phone. You told Bana not to cross the river because it was very late. And they turned him on how they crossed the river. That's what we're hearing he said. So you need to exonerate yourself. You got to go talk. You get so. They said the show that just a few hundred people were watching the show. That, 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 that the place you will go to her. You get serious accusation on your head. You will go to on a Facebook show or maybe only five thousand people watch it. Then you say you're not you're really talking. <laughs> they got joking. Let's take two two calls. I like, don't make it three. Don't make it two. I, I gotta go back to bed. The man, the man already. So why I'm why I'm gonna go call him for? I'm gonna go spend my, my money. America to call my America to library. Yeah, I'm gonna go spend my money to call the man. I know the man here are in the same church. We in Zion Grove Baptist Church. But I think. It is possible that St. Moses is innocent. But the way St. Moses has handled this thing, he messed up big time. You're going to tell you now what I said. He messed up big time in Liberia. Liberia is a highly, 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 highly gullible society. Small thing, people will say you did it. You're not careful. They put something on your head, they finish. And you're not told nothing. Then you're not told nothing. Why can I take two calls? Let me go. Somebody say, you scared. You scared? <laughs> good morning, Pangomo. Yeah, good morning, man. Welcome. Yeah, good morning. Yeah, good morning. How are you? Morning, 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 man. Okay. And uh, I've been a very good day. Right here for our friend, our friend that passed on your order. I went in yesterday and I have super talent in there by your friend. By your, by your
For the third day, people got killed after that year. Are you, are you, they not got any children? No. They not got nobody. Even the woman, they don't come out. And the house of the woman, arrested, to, to go from the dinner. Then the people come up. Are you not here what? Seven or the police are under people that were caught, you know, children. So, no. My brother, my sister, my husband, my sister, they all go. All my sister, I can do everything. That's it, Jeremy. I have it. He gave me the court case. All right, all right, brother, we gotta, we gotta take another call. Uh, okay, uh, I'm going to be very, very sunny here because I don't have all the facts. I'm not going to sit down here and neither will I allow Bwaga or anybody to say Simone kill anybody. We don't have the facts. We, we don't. Because they say that not the first time for Simone to send somebody to go wear on your machine, Bwaga. And you understand what I'm trying to say, eh? Mm -hmm. He always sending people to go work on your machine. So, it is possible he just sent them to work on the machine. It is possible they got drowned. But the way he handled this situation, he did it to himself. Now he need a sport. The way he handled this situation, he did it to himself. You go sit down on one Facebook show that they play, you go talk air. After one week, fuck, you know how many days for when the Simosa funeral home to protest? If I was see Moses, I will go to Lone Star Cell or whichever cell phone company is with Orange and tell them, print my call log and bring the call log when they show you to the library people. And you'll see, yeah, yeah. I told Siafa, the beginning banana. Because he said he told banana not to cross. That's what he said. Mm. He said, late at night, when I call, he said, oh, what do you want to leave or want to come back to, to town? He said, it's late. You don't cross the river. That what he said he said. That what he said he said. But what guy? Hmm? Mm. But what guy? The issue here is this. If you say you told them not to cross the river, that means there's a call that you and Banato on the phone because he said Banato he. He told Banato don't cross the river. He said, he said but the train here was hard. They said they want to come back. That what? That what he said he said. That what he said he that what they say, he say. And now I say, they say, he say. Because I ain't getting from him all. Ain't you know what I'm mm -hmm. So now you're supposed to go get the call law. And say, boy, yeah, yeah. At 6.50 p.m. Or 7 p.m. When I call me and say, he won't come. Yeah, they call. I told Banana, say, don't come. The call law will show that he and Banana spoke. It will show. What time they spoke? How long they spoke for? See Moses will do that one. See Moses is an educated man. He not do that one. You think what you go to school for? You sit down there, people put three human beings bending on your head. What guy? Eh? The family will be uh, the family cell will be coming for, for for you know when they come for revenge. Thank you. Three human beings better to put them on your head. Then you say, I you play young man. They say you won't run away from the country. Look at that one, her. That was that over. We are you to push it on. Now we, but the man has not even said nothing. Then you appear on some small little Facebook show. Well, maybe the total number of people that watch the show after the show, there are 5,000 people. That appear, you will appear. The men are serious, man. The man of my own church made for Zion Grove Baptist Church in Broadville. Hmm? He's a hard-working man in the church and all. He was head of the, I think Simoza was the chairman of the building committee. I personally donated over a thousand dollars US to the building project of the Zion Grove Church. I personally, Simoza head in that committee. He and team team at Dilate, they on the they on the committee. They are all my Zion Grove brothers. But in this situation here, yeah, my church mate Simose, you didn't handle it properly at all. You see the way your Nina small? The boss oh, you care that relative? You see the, 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 that, that woman who called just now? Because the first thing, boy, the family people completely, the man was not reaching out to them to talk to them. You, look, let me tell you something. Accidents do happen. happen. Things can happen. Right now, I can't draw any conclusion because we can't even find the people. Nothing. 
And it says the mother knew that he knew that he knew, he knew them. He knew the turn. He knew he knew Bana. So they said Bana that one Bana first time working for him. They used to go up there to work on his machine and come back. You know? Go go up there work on his machine and come back. So I'm not gonna say that here. So it wasn't killed them. I will not say that. I feel sorry for the family, they can't find their loved ones. I pray they somewhere or something. Because but at this point, after all, 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 all a week, then you start getting scared now, right? Because where could they be? In a whole week, where could they be? You start getting scared. You know? That's the situation. But say Moses, you did not do well. You 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 think people go to school get a while to say you know how to be a rep? When you are in a crisis, you know how to manage the crisis. That's when you deploy your education. You put your education to work. You speak out. You lay the facts out. All the steps in chronological order. You let the public know because there's a public sentiment. This is a public issue. So public sentiments are at play here. And you got to diffuse them. So you gotta be careful. Yeah, now everybody say you know something. I, I, I look at the views there. Over 1,200 people. Say Moses guilty. Say Moses guilty. You see that? Ah, like people logging. They finish passing judgment on you. You see? Because you sat on there, you close your mouth. Over oh, one week, you don't talk nothing on the yesterday, you appear on Facebook show. No, man. You can't overrate like that. You can't overrate You can't overrate like that. Then the woman said, the woman who called said, I'm a brother, she said, and you and the boy made argument for money, Benny. That was a normal thing. What that? You, you know, you, you, people made argument for money, Benny. So, Simone, the boy child, Simone, the money, and her parents, Simone didn't want to pay the money. That's not what Simone was okay for. If Simone came in, that would not be the reason. I'm not saying Simone can't kill. That's not what I'm saying. But I'm just saying, in my mind, somebody said, I, 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 the boy child, the man, 500 out, 400 out, 300 out. And the mother said the money was too much, and they were arguing. So, so that cannot be the reason, the motive. People get made argument all the time for money business. All the time. What guy? They get made argument. Oh, my man, the money tell me too well. I'll pay you more. Oh, my man, no, I can't pay the more. That's not the reason anybody will kill anybody. For two, three hundred dollars, because they're not on pay. But well, my point is, he handled this situation very poorly. Thank you very much, folks. God bless you. Have yourselves a wonderful, blessed day. Bye-bye. To my cousin, Molly Shafa. Molly, you celebrated your birthday on Friday. I want to say shout-out to you. Happy, happy birthday, Molly Shafa, Delaware, US, USA. God bless you, and I wish you many more years to come. Bye-bye. My man, they put killing Benny on you, eh? You can't play your hand with you. Oh. Killing Benny. Can't play your gun. Liberia, the last place you want to be accused of something like that. What? Ha, yeah. The people who were not there, they were talking there like they were dead. I don't know what Abba Peter said and give you that man in That one there, clear cut, they murdered them. That one you know. Means what then? They murdered them. That one there, you know. Everybody know. Yeah. And we got a motive. The murder then to conceal evidence. We know that one. That one different. 